Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We Ching Talk, our handler from Singapore, came across an interesting phishing SMS message impersonating the Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore, Singapore's tax authority. In this example, the attacker did add some additional tricks to make the message more plausible. First of all, the attacker spoofed the caller ID of the SMS message. The caller ID used to then match a well-known Singapore bank. By spoofing the caller ID, the message now shows up well in the same conversation as other messages that you received from the bank, which of course makes it much more likely that a victim them will actually think the message is legit. Now, what gave the message away here is that it sort of followed a very common theme being used for a while now. And so users have learned uh, to be uh, wary of these type of messages. It basically states that uh, the account was suspended because of a suspect transaction. And then in order to restore access to the account, well, uh, and help with the investigation also, the victim uh, should click on a link. The link, of course, then leads to a phishing site, but only if the victim uses a mobile browser. If you're using a desktop computer, well, uh, then uh, you will be blocked. Also, if you are connecting from any of a uh, known malware site uh, IP address, like virus total and such, that will be blocked as well. Block lists like this are not uncommon for phishing sites. And over the last few years, we have published some of the block lists that we did find in phishing kits. The fake login form is visible to user with the mobile device and then typically asks for username and password, even does some checks here in JavaScript to make sure the format is correct. And Sonic Wall users, it's time to patch again, but this time it's not the firewall itself. It's Sonic Wall GMS and Sonic Wall Analytics on prem. There is a SQL injection vulnerability, and yes, exploitation does not require authentication. SonicWall assigned the CVE number 2022-22-2880, and so far haven't seen any proof of concept code or anything else published that would lead to sort of an easy exploit for the vulnerability. So you may have a couple days or so to patch. Little note of interest here, uh, SonicWall states as root cause of the SQL injection vulnerability, the improper neutralization of special elements, which applies to SonicWall, uh, probably not escaping quotes and such uh, properly. While this is often quoted as a mitigation for SQL injection, I just want to point out uh, parameterized queries is really the way to go if you do want to prevent SQL injection. Cleaning up your input and such, definitely not a bad idea in addition to using parameterized uh, queries. And back in March, uh, a researcher discovered vulnerabilities in TLS implementations used in particular for IoT devices. The root cause of these uh, TLS storm vulnerabilities, as they were uh, made known, was that the implementation didn't correctly check for error codes. And as a result, TLS traffic was not properly validated. At the time, Schneider Electric's APC uninterruptible power supplies were mentioned as vulnerable. As a follow-up now, James Blightstill uh, did write a blog post late last week looking into similar issues with SHA implementations. SHA, the standard hashing algorithms. In particular, he found issues with SHA-2. So I'm not talking here about uh, some of the old SHA-1 collisions or things like this. Probably not a surprise, but it looks like he found similar issues that could allow attackers to craft signatures based on SHA-2, for example, that would then be misidentified as correct, uh, even if they aren't. The interesting part here is also that this appears to affect uh, libraries that use hardware offload for some of uh, these uh, SHA calculations and then don't properly process any error codes that they may be getting back. Two examples mentioned in the blog post, one Wolf SSL and then also OpenSSL. The 
conditions here are fairly specific, in particular requiring uh, this uh, offload. So I wouldn't really consider them as super critical, but as always, keep watching for cryptographic libraries updates. They keep coming up, uh, well, every so often, so uh, just uh, keep them up to date. And last week, I mentioned that Alation fixed a bug in its questions module that created a user account with a fixed password. Just a quick update here for your awareness. The password is now widely known and public. Actually, I think that happened on Friday or so. So uh, definitely make sure that you patch. And if you still find an unpatched system, assume it's compromised. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.